The Archdiocese of Toronto and the National Catholic Broadcasting Council through the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board presents Sunday TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Sunday TV Mass on the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. I'm Father Peter Turone. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first is Lina Araneta Santiago and family from Vancouver, British Columbia to commemorate the fourth death anniversary of Danilo Santiago, loving husband, father, for the souls in purgatory and for the people of her beloved Philippines. The second are the Rain and Wayne from Ottawa, Ontario for family and friends both living and deceased, for countries with abundant vaccines so that they may share with the less fortunate countries and for those suffering from natural disasters. The third are anonymous donors from Toronto, Ontario, for the living and deceased members of their family and thanksgiving for blessings received for good health and for the holy souls in purgatory. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of the Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on Amen. earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whatever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. The word of the Lord. Thanks. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you, as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. 
Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. So I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands and call on your name. My soul is satisfied as with a rich feast, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. My soul thirsts for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our heart that we might know the hope to which we are called. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me for you are thinking not as God does, but as humans do. Then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone wants to become my follower, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit anyone to gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will anyone give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each according to their work. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. Many years ago, I had the privilege of visiting a cloistered Carmelite convent in northern Italy. And it was the bishop who was celebrating the Mass and receiving the solemn vows of one of the nuns that had been there for several years. And she chose the first reading. O oh Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. Every single one of us, I pray, who's had a an, real kind of a living experience, an encounter with Jesus Christ, can understand what this means and what Jeremiah himself is saying to us. We can experience, perhaps that was the moment of our conversion, where we felt the loving presence of the Lord. It's just like the disciples when they saw Jesus look at them. What was it in his eyes that allowed them to drop everything? There was something more that was there than the ordinary look, even the look of love from someone else that they were familiar with. 
but there's something about our Lord that draws us to himself. So this experience, this reading that she herself chose is what allowed her ultimately to leave the world and to enter into the convent so she be, can become a nun. And she took these vows and it was beautiful. Her family was there and there were many people there listening. And then the bishop was speaking about the importance of vocation and then how we're called to discern this spe special role, right? This ministry in a sense that we participate in the world to give the light of Christ's presence to the people that do not yet know him. So looking at this, and then I was looking at the, the reading from the gospel, and then you hear how Peter, just prior to this passage in the gospel, Peter is filled with joy. Again, he says that Jesus is the son of the living God. Right? He's the Messiah. And Jesus says, you know, there was the Holy Spirit that inspired you to say these words, Peter. So you can imagine, he must have been overwhelmed with joy. And then as things kind of go on, and then Jesus starts to reveal to them what's going to happen to him. And then when he starts hearing about suffering, he becomes overwhelmed. And then he says to the Lord, he says, God forbid that you're going to suffer. So Peter was excited about the beginning part, that consolation, but then he struggled with the reality of suffering that comes with following our Lord. And as I was reflecting on the readings for this weekend, I started to go back to St. John of the Cross and Teresa of Avila. And for those who are familiar, I'm sure many of you are, that the church in her wisdom and through our tradition kind of has discerned three different phases of what we call the spiritual life. So we have this first experience where we, we have the presence of God that comes to us all at once. It's like a breaking through of God in our, in our lives. And then we experience his mercy, his call to repentance. And then in that beginning phase, we start to also feel his presence. So it's not just with the mind, but we feel it in our emotions in every different part of ourselves and our being. And there's so much consolation, there's so much joy. It's so easy to pray. So it's so easy to, to serve God and our brothers and sisters. So it's easy to practice virtue. So this is in the beginning stages, what we call the purgative stage. And everything is great for a while. And St. John of the Cross, he says, look, this is all well and good. And the Lord does this because he wants us to have a foundation there, right? So we can experience the consolations of God. But because the Lord loves us and he wants us, as Paul says, to be utterly transformed in mind, in body, and soul, right? That he wants us to fall in love with the God of consolations and less with his consolations. So what does that mean? Okay, well, it starts off very good. And then just imagine, as John says, a baby who's being nursed by their mother. It's one of the most beautiful scenes, right? So the child is being nursed by its mother. It's cooing, cawing, very calm, very happy. And then at a certain point, as the child grows, the mother says, now it's time for you to, le to learn how to eat solid food. And there's a bit of an adjustment. And the child struggles with that because now they have to learn to chew, right? They're starting to taste different things. There's a process. And it's not always very palatable. It can be painful. And John says that God does this because he wants us to become mature. Right? He wants us to become mature. So we go through these stages. And then that pain that's there, that suffering, as Jesus says, that cross that we all have to bear as followers starts to merge. And then what happens? Unfortunately, John says that many of us, we end up stopping, we, well, we move away from the faith. We say, Lord, this is too difficult. I just can't do this. I'm just gonna go off and do my own thing. Maybe I'll come back to mass on Sundays, but I'm not taking the spiritual life too seriously. It's too difficult. I remember reading this book on the Desert Fathers, and there was this one Desert Father who had this young man come visit him. So he helped him out in the spiritual life, and then he kind of went off, he came back, years later, and he said, I can't do it anymore. I had to pull back. And he said, why? Why did you do this? He said, because the light was too bright. The light was too bright. And what does that mean? Well, as we get closer to God, we start to see who he was light from light. We start to see the darkness within ourselves, and it's painful. So we want to move away. We want to move away. Even Jeremiah, he said, look, he was so overwhelmed by the suffering and the pressure from the people around him that right? he was getting tired of this. So he cries out to God and says, you know, I'm done with this. I don't want to say anything anymore, like all the prophets. But then there's a fire in his bones, right? There's this fire. So it's God it keeps pushing him from within. The Holy Spirit is pushing him to continue to speak, and he does it. 
So, and then he slowly moves from one stage to another. So as we move in the spiritual life from the purgative, we go to the illuminative. So that's at that point when we have to hold on to God and we start to practice our faith regardless of how we feel. And that means that we're starting to become more mature. And Paul says again, that transformation shows that now we've understood what Jesus says by carrying his cross. It doesn't mean we're never gonna have consolations again, but they're not gonna come in the way that we expect them. And then there's the final stage, which is what we say the unitive stage. It's that when we no longer care about what anybody thinks. It's not that we, we, we're proud, but we're so utterly consumed with the love of God. That's all we want. Peter in today's gospel, he's still in the beginning stages. Again, he still has not uh, witnessed Christ's crucifixion and death and the resurrection and the coming forth of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. But we are people of the fulfillment and we've received the Holy Spirit. And we beg the Holy Spirit, transform our minds, transform our hearts, transform all of those who are baptized so that we can enter into this unitive of state, which means the absolute and total love for God and for our neighbor. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting, amen. With joy in our hearts, we turn to our loving Father, and we ask in Jesus' name for everything necessary for ourselves, for the church, and for the whole world to experience the consolation of God and a desire to grow in intimacy with him. For all those in the daily TV Mass intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who suffer from addiction, and for those in recovery, and for those seeking healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those trapped in the evil of modern day slavery, for all those who work to help these people and to increase the number of those willing to get involved to bring an end to human trafficking. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we are confident that you will answer all of our prayers because as always, we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours would be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. May the sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, part of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. 
and so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, the gifts, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given out for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 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 Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should enter, enter under my roof, my roof. but only say, say the word, and my, my soul shall be Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.